I don't know. How okay, we are now recording. I don't know how I did that, but <laughs> but it happened. <laughs> Push some buttons. Um, all right. Well, it's good to see everybody. Um, Georg, can you kind of give us? I was wondering what's going on with the Discord stuff. So we have this conversation. So I'll back up a little bit. The conversation about Discourse has been going on since we started. And it's always been, do we go to Discourse? Do we use a different platform? Do we use emails? And we started out with an email list. And so back in the day when we started, it was just like, OK, let's keep it simple and keep what we have. And we'll switch later if things change and the main list doesn't work. In the last year, we have seen several email lists being created, the one for the software, for metrics, for DNI, for uh, events. And then we also started uh, archiving some again, getting rid of them because they didn't have the traffic that we were thinking they would have. And mailing lists are that way, that they are just good for sending emails, but they're not really good for scaling or having different topics or having a, a searchable archive with tags and good discussions sorted by the thread. And so that's why um, I've set up the discourse link or the discourse instance so that we can think about moving there. Um, and I'm saying moving because after the conversations we had last week and on the mailing list, maintaining the mailing list and discourse sounds like a bad idea as we are fragmenting the community. And so we should have either a mailing list or the discourse uh, platform. And then as in terms of features, discourse provides all of the functionality that we know from mailing lists. So you can respond to right out of your mail um, software or program that you use. Uh, you can sign up to certain threads or topics on the Discourse platform, just like you would sign up to different mailing lists and mute others. So that if you are in one work group and don't want to listen to what the other work group is saying, that is definitely possible. And that answers all of the questions that I've received so far. One of the concerns was host getting this course hosted by the company behind this course, but it's an open source company. We can export all the data, spin up our own instance at any time. Or if that really is a concern, then we can ask the Linux foundation to host it for us. So thank you for posting the link in the chat, Matt. Sure. That's my summary on the conversation we've had so far. Um, if I missed something, please fill in. Okay. Any comments from folks? I mean, is the suggestion to move off the mail list? I don't know. Something seems yes. off on that to me, but. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, I I agree with what Garrick said. If if you're gonna, I mean, I don't have a strong opinion, but we shouldn't have two tools for communication, which is just pick one. But um. I don't know. Yeah, I want to pick one and settle because we just moved us off of OSS Health to Chaos, yeah. and uh, now um, I guess the 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 quest the desire is to be able to check questions to be able to look things up essentially i don't know it, to me the mail list at the moment seems fine i don't feel like it's really inhibiting anything so that's kind of my take and i feel like all the work like the technical work yeah is occurring in the github repos anyway right i mean yeah and i don't i don't have any specific objection to the using mailing lists, but I mean, certainly the, the suggestion or the idea must have arisen out of something, right? Well, it originated out of the DNI work group, I think. Wasn't that where yeah, it started? I definitely got that impression. I'm just curious 
it seems like there's a reason. They didn't Three. Come up with the idea for no reason, did they? Okay. And maybe, I don't know, here, is this a, how will it be received if the group wants you to stay with the mailing list for DNI? Well, DNI got its own mailing lists. Um, so we can stay with the mailing list model. Um, just as we are looking into the future, it, um, I, I think we'll have it come up again that we want more mailing lists and remove others again. Probably. And that's where I think it's more flexible if you just do everything within discourse. All right. Hi, Fadir. I do worry about having too many channels that people pay attention to just from a new uh, but Okay, well. I don't want to get well, in the way of working yes. once in the same way, though. Yeah, how about this? Let's just, I don't know. I'll make a proposal. As exciting as this discussion is. Yeah, that's <laughs> riveting. <laughs> Why don't we just, can we just stick with the mailing list for the time being until we really start running into problems on the mail list? I don't feel like we're running into any problems at the moment. In communicating on the mail list, mail list and GitHub repositories. I, I think that discourse might be. might be useful if activity levels were a lot higher. But until we get to that point, I think it's probably just a lot of extra stuff we don't need. That's kind of how I feel too. Just a little extra overhead for what we're trying to do right now. Yeah, that's that's sort of my concern is that I, I'm, I'm concerned about fragmenting the conversations and we don't have so many conversations that it's been a problem yet. And so I feel like I, yeah, I don't know. Switching tools is really hard. I was concerned about switching mail lists. I was, yeah. <laughs> that gave me a little cool. So. Yeah. Well, like you said, I mean, most, of the, most of the collaboration should be happening in the, the GitHub repos. Anyway, anyway, which is where it is happening. That's yeah. where the conversations are occurring, like on the, like the devil in the details stuff. Mm -hmm. So how about we stay with what we have and then um, just don't create new mail lists. And if we see the need for new mail lists, then we yeah. pull the trigger to move to discourse. I'm okay with that until it actually becomes a necessity or to Ben's point, that it becomes complicated enough. Yep. Yeah, my, my experience in moving tools is that there's always some compelling reason that the existing tool isn't working. So you move to a new tool and then you find the limitations in that tool and that's not gonna work for some people. And then it, you, you get into this constant trying to fix something that's not broken and I feel like that's where we are right now. Uh, yeah, that's well put. <laughs> not what you're stepping in. Okay. Yeah. Okay, with Good. that, I want to uh, rest the case and introduce Fidir Hi. Uh, in Edinburgh. And Hello. On to the call because we had an interesting conversation there. And so I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, uh, everybody could hear me because I'm new with uh, Zoom. Yes. Yeah, okay, perfectly. Um, uh, so, um, uh, let's, uh, I, I'm new with uh, Zoom, so I, I'm trying, uh, I will try to uh, to show you my screen. It okay. works. It works, yeah? Yep. Okay. Uh, you could see my screen, yeah, with yeah. some slides, yeah, okay. Uh, so, basically, um, in Edinburgh, um, in the UK, we, we met with um, uh, um, uh, Georg um, uh, uh, and spoke about my talk I gave there about uh, the methodology of uh, multi criteria comparison and typology of uh, open source different open source projects. So basically, it's um, uh, because I didn't uh, met anybody in France uh, before uh, from ca chaos community. So um, I discovered what uh, basically you are you are working in this field. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, and uh, we spoke with um, uh, Georg, and he proposed uh, me to speak a little bit uh, on the, this um, uh, regular event about uh, <coughs> about uh, uh, what I uh, what I did. So basically, um, 
I spoke about uh, about. If I can inter interrupt for a moment, I think you might be showing us the wrong screen. We see your desktop right now, rather than a desktop. website. Desktop. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was yeah. I was waiting for something to appear. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, is it better? Oh, something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I said, I knew with Zoom, so sorry. Um, okay. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, I spoke on open source uh, summit about uh, um, just open source projects uh, because me, I'm CTO of uh, um, some French, uh, one French uh, agency, and we are working lots with open source. Uh, so, and we could notice what the, there is more and more open source projects, and it's hard to define which are good, which are bad. It's basically you know all the stuff like health metrics of uh, open source soft software, and I proposed some methodology about uh, how to choose a good uh, good projects. Um, so we have different layers about uh, metrics. We have uh, metrics for core team, me me metrics for ecosystem about different extensions of uh, one uh, of uh, technologies. Uh, after uh, various um, uh, metrics of uh, open source uh, um, uh, project integration integrators of open source solutions and metrics even from clients. So we have lots of stuff. And I spoke about um, just documentation, marketing, performance production, QA, security, size-oriented stuff, uh, usage, so lots of stuff. And what is the, the most interesting, it's like open source software specific um, uh, metrics in our case. Um, uh, so for example, uh, probably, I don't know if, if you already met such metrics, but I will speak and probably you you already know it, uh, but uh, I will speak anyway. So um, about author, so we have like such metric like notoriety or experience of uh, the uh, author. So we could, for example, me, um, I made, let's, uh, uh, let's show you some stuff. Um, code, okay. Uh, could could you see my um, my uh, um, editor code editor here? Mm -hmm. yes? yes. So so I wrote an application which is which calls gstat. So basically, I worked with GitHub statistics and a small application uh, which is open source and uh, itself is situated on GitHub. What does it do? It um, it could um, uh, get um, uh, it could get uh, different uh, uh, it could get for example um, some uh, one uh, one or multiple projects from um, uh, from command line you see command line here command line i don't know yep. if you see yeah uh, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so so, so uh, basically is uh, top we could um, uh, make make a query and uh, to check from github directly um, uh, one uh, or uh, multiple um, one or multiple um, open source projects and we could compare them between them so we could run on, on different criteria so um, about these criteria um, uh, so for example it's like experience of the after it, it's own involvement into uh, his open source software actually uh, also a, I have a question so that was a that what you were showing was comparison between projects based on certain metrics? Uh, exactly, exactly, yeah. So let's uh, see, I don't know if, uh, um, okay, let's, I will show you Fedger, Fedger, uh, because you could do it, uh, you could check yourself, it, it works. Um, so you ha we have application. And we have statistics because I pushed some statistics I made uh, with uh, with my software, so everybody could uh, could have uh, the access to the statistics and uh, could um, work, could uh, could analyze it. So uh, here uh, there are uh, language um, uh, comparison because uh, even language languages itself it's open source projects today. Uh, so I made the analysis of. Uh, um, uh, of open source languages, which I found on GitHub. So you have keys here, like Go, Python, um, PHP, Rust, Ruby, Elixir, Crystal, DMD, or Erlang, Lua. 
So there are lots of languages, and uh, we have like different metrics here. You have metrics, 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 metrics. So all these metrics are uh, received from GitHub, um, and uh, my application uh, uses GitHub API to get all this data. Uh, so, for example. Uh, such metrics like languages, uh, because some some uh, some open source projects uh, used lots of uh, languages, and it's more hard to maintain. If uh, there, there are less languages and there is some uh, principal main language, so it's uh, more easier to maintain open source project because you don't need too much different experts. Um, actually, like uh, some uh, number metrics like code size, like uh, uh, like commits, additions, and uh, we have social metrics like author author followers and number of uh, followers of the author. Can I ask a question here? So, what was? Do you have a rationale for picking the these columns? Uh, sorry, so for example, uh, like age and days. As I'm looking at it, is age there, and days. Yeah. So, what was the rationale for picking age and age in days as an input? Uh, age in days. Okay, I see. Uh, it's basically to to have the possibility to order uh, more simply uh, and uh, to assign. Uh, uh, metrics and it's it's like more more visual because we of course we could have like metric like created at and uh, we could pay the, uh, put a date uh, but agent dates it's uh, something more clear so we could uh, um, order and to understand uh, if uh, the project is is newer it's semantically is it's more easy mm -hmm. um, it's not semantically but on the cognitive level it, it's more easy to um, uh, realize which project is uh, older and which is uh, um, newer yeah, I think one of the one of the things we struggle with a lot in the chaos project is there's a lot of available trace data like what you have here mm -hmm. and it's it's trying to determine the rationale for why and the the chart you showed earlier kind of metrics aimed at different layers that that was really interesting. You know what I mean? You had showed that earlier that there were different kind of profiles of individuals mm -hmm. which metrics could be aimed at. I think one of the, the tricks is, so for example, the work that's going on in DNI is like why, you know, you have these areas that you're interested in and then there's particular m metrics that highlight something about that area. So um, being able to contextualize these metrics is, is I think one of our huge challenges that at least that I run into. Um, so I'm trying to get at like why the columns that you picked here why you picked these particular columns okay because yeah. because bas uh, i could say already what i'm a cto of a company which uh, yeah. uh, has uh, our own values and uh, i'm a pragmatic guy so yep. for me it's important because i um, new newer project project which is uh, more newer has potentially has more new ideas. It's like new generation of open source project. If it will be some old, old, old project, okay, we could see it's like stable project. But um, open source, it's uh, always competition, always innovation. So it's, um, it, it's positive, um, um, it's, it's, it's a positive metric if uh, the project is newer and has small age in days. Okay. And is that, did, I mean, do you have rationale for kind of all of those? Uh, ma majority, yeah. Some of, some okay. of metrics, uh, uh, I get them only for statistics, uh, just to, uh, to think about, uh, and uh, they are not used in ratings. Okay. But um, so it's like what GitHub API gives me. I, I get it, I put it here to, to think if it could be used to, to make some um, evacuation uh, with this data and uh, to, to do something, uh, but uh, lots of them are used uh, for ratings. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so, uh, so uh, another in interesting metrics. Uh, f uh, of course, there is like social metrics, like stars, forks, uh, active forks. Because sometimes people they fork open source project, but they um, don't give back. And uh, so we could see what it's like good when we have like 
good open source project with good spirit where people are motivated to to go and to contribute back it's like not only one guy who is doing only his code and he shared and he didn't accept anything of any uh, other project so he, it's like also good uh, contribution metrics like if uh, there are a high number of active forkers in, in persons for example uh, also another interesting metric it's like returning contributors it's mean contributors which um, uh, contributes regularly on, on a regular basis because in <clears throat> almost in any project you have you could have uh, like lots of contributors like like 400 here but uh, um, uh, only 100 from them are really um, regular regular contributors so um, uh, they more more like uh, four weeks uh, of contribution uh, during their participation so, so another kind of metric i'm wondering from sean and i think jesus are you on you are kind of what are there things in here that you're seeing that aren't captured things like from uh, from auger or grimoire lab yeah we'd have to see under the hood to know okay i'm not seeing anything that we're not measuring i suspect okay. there there are things that yeah it's good that, that might be operationalized differently in this tool it's um it I mean, technically, it uh, would be worth looking into what it's doing. It looks so. Well, actually, yeah. So to that point, do you have do you, um, Fadir? Do you operationalize? Do you have how you operationalize these things, or is it just kind of in the code? Oh, um, sorry. Um, okay. Um, sure. After. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, colleagues. Uh, okay. So um, uh, you, the question is. Um, how you operationalize these, like some of them, right, might be fairly easy to understand from a definition perspective. Mm -hmm. so for example, forks. Yeah. Probably just forks <laughs> is what I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. but things like returning contributors. Uh, okay. So you, so like you how mean, you actually do, is that, do you have that on here? I mean, I suppose I could look it up. In definition. The you would like, uh, yeah. yeah. If I have a definition. No, at, at the moment, uh, it's like, it's too obvious for me. But if you think what uh, some definition needs, uh, it's possible to add it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, particularly, I, I, want, I didn't quite understand what you meant by more than four weeks. Is this people contributing after four weeks? Or, I mean, they contributed, you know, for more than four weeks in a, in a certain time frame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could uh, have like um, uh, life of the project and uh, we could use not uh, like four weeks, but we could have like per per we could have a metric per percentage uh, of uh, um, of uh, participation uh, of uh, of a contributor during the lifetime of a project. So we could make relation not to the week, but to the time life of the project. It's possible to do. Okay. Yeah, I think that definition would be, I mean, that's something I, you know, would be interested in like measuring in our community, like how, what's a, what's a meaningful way of measuring if people are coming back or not. And, but. Okay. Um, so, so, um, uh, so I'm collecting metrics after I'm, I'm make um, a calculation, uh, um, some uh, under some, some formulas of some uh, metrics then are not uh, so obvious, like returning contributors. So there is like number of contributors, number of um, uh, commits. Uh, so and uh, and uh, after. Um, uh, I'm ranking all the all these metrics, and there is like um, overall placement, uh, which is based on uh, the medium placement of um, in different metrics. So and um, and we have like the results. Yeah. Um, oh. But here I put in the in the chat. I put. I don't know if you've seen the chaos GitHub repo. Uh, chaos, chaos, GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there, that that's these are the links. So at the top, you'll see Grimoire Lab and Augur. 
Mm -hmm. And those are the two kind of the, so Sean is kind of leading the efforts with Augur who's on here and Jesus who's also on this call is leading the efforts with, well, with other people too, um, Daniel uh, on Grimoire Lab. And I mean, maybe it's worth kind of, they meet, that group meets Wednesdays at this time, tomorrow at this time. Is that correct, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they, they're working through just kind of these kind of thorny issues of what are the, the relevant metrics, how are they defined or operationalized, and then how can they actually be implemented in a meaningful way. So maybe you want to participate in that conversation as well. Yeah, it could be interesting. Uh, yeah. Something, something that I find interesting, I'm sorry I came late to the meeting, so I'm not, I'm not sure if I missed something important, but from your presentation, I've, I, I find out that you have a kind of a use case. I mean, you are using metrics for, for something specific. And uh, from that point of view, in the GMD working group, we are, we are trying currently to capture use cases. So people using metrics for some specific purpose. So if you want to contribute, there is a, a template and a procedure for, for producing use cases. Use cases are not directly tailored to, inter to, to finding out metrics but they should be helping us to finding out which metrics are interesting. Because as Matt said before, one of our main interests now is not only defining metrics, but defining metrics for something specific, I mean, useful metrics. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and the usual way of doing that, you know, is in, in relationship with some use cases. So that's why uh, on a top-down approach, on, on the one hand, we are trying to capture use cases. And on the other hand, we are trying to capture specific questions and goals for same focus areas. You have the list of focus areas in the in the repository for the working group, if you want to have a look. Okay, um, if you could share some links, it could be great also, yeah. Actually, if you just go uh, back, you're still sharing your screen. So if you go, if you go back just to the, yeah. yeah, so if you go back just at the uh, GMD work group, so if you just go back to that main chaos page. Yeah, you could, otherwise you could send a link. Uh, I'll just, uh, actually, yeah, I suppose that's a lot easier. Uh, of course. <laughs> and uh, you if, you want, there. if you want, we can, also, we can also talk by email, and I can tell you a bit more about use cases and how we are working with them, just in case you want to start contributing that way. And okay. of course, Perfect. To, dis to discuss on the metrics as well. I will share my mail so you can share yours uh, after you could send why, me if, if you don't if you don't mind why don't you uh, send an introduction to the mailing list so that everybody knows uh, you know the chaos mailing list no i don't know okay if you go to the website to the chaos website uh, uh, it, uh, i don't remember exactly where but it's simple to find out the main I'll mailing list the link the one second. One. Oh, thank, thank you thank you Kirk. Uh, basically, the mailing list is for general staff related to chaos, but also for specific discussions. Uh, and I, I, I suggest that you send a message introducing yourself, and uh, from that on, we can we can start the conversation specific on use cases if you want to contribute us to contribute one. And as as Matt said, if you have the time, meet us tomorrow in the working group for GMD at this time in yeah, this same room in Zoom. So that okay. we can discuss in more same detail. Group. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Same group. Same room. All the things at the same time. Same. Yeah. Usually the GMD is, is meeting on Wednesdays at, at, at six European time. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So um, that's all from my part. Thank you for. I your have yeah. one question. One of the things, Fadir, you said is that some of the metrics you use for rankings or something along those lines. And I was just wondering if you could talk more about what you do in terms of ranking, if I understood you correctly. Uh, basically, um, it's the, the idea is to find the, um, on, on the base, the uh, system of uh, metrics of important criteria and on weights of each criteria. The idea is to find the best project for uh, some use case. For example, uh, for example, uh, 
for, for me, it could be important if I am like a young developer and I would like to, to find some new fancy project. I would like to find popular project. I would like to find newest project uh, um, uh, with um, uh, active community. Yeah, so I, I could define some uh, co coefficients uh, to different metrics. And um, um, the idea is to rank, uh, uh, to rank first and after to, to count the best project for your use case. And you're already doing that? Uh, yeah. Um, do you have a ranking or how you weighted that that you can share? Because I think that's also an interesting um, because for that ranking, as you said, there has to be a rationale for how you weight it. Uh, the methodology is described in uh, in my talk. Uh, example of ratings, um, I will uh, I could share to everyone. So it's like example of ratings. The methodology itself uh, with uh, formulas, uh, some formulas. It's not too complicated. You could find in in slides of my presentation from Oscon. Uh, um, um, so, so it's and the, the tool where is a prototype which is working at the moment so it, it gets the data it counts it trades cool thank you mm -hmm. awesome welcome thank you uh all right so let's see as fadir was showing things i realized that i Still have to clean up the metrics repository. So <laughs> Sue is sharing a screen. See, I still have some work to do there. So that's on my to-do list. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for putting that on your screen. So it put it right in front of my face. To remind me that I have things to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. What what else? Um, uh, what do people else? What else do people have kind of on their mind? D and I. How are things going over there? Yeah, for D and I, it was a it was a small meeting. There was the Open Stack conference. Some people were at, and um, okay. other people who couldn't attend. So it was Garrick and my and I, and we talked about um, one of the things we're working on right now in the D and I working group is proposals for upcoming talks at upcoming conferences. Okay. So, um, hi, Fadir. So we're um, we put together a. Um, Kind of a panel proposal that we'll submit to ChaosCon. Okay. And um, Georg put together uh, another proposal for more of a kind of a workshoppy thing, like what we did in Edinburgh. And and this is also a good time to remind you that ChaosCon CFP is open. We do not have very many talks submitted, so tweet it. Um, wrestle people into submitting things. I don't care, whatever it takes. Uh, but we need to get more. We need to get more submissions. When was the deadline? For that, huh? The deadline is uh, the either the twenty third or the twenty sixth. Okay, twenty sixth. I was just checking. So. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Is anybody who is anybody on this call planning on going? Mm, I am I'm planning on going. This and I have discussed. Me too. Uh, having a session there, so. Uh -huh. So uh, if you're planning on going, I, I guess yeah. The Hasu sent me an email yesterday, and I've been digging out from under my travel, but I'll have to okay. respond to today. Okay. Yeah, if you're going, definitely, definitely want to submit something, and you know maybe other people who are using some of the tools that we're working on. If we can get some, mm -hmm. you know, kind of some users of of some of what we're doing to submit some talks, that would be great too. Because it'd be good to. See how people are using the the data. That would be great. Um, be great. Yeah. And you know, and so I'm not panicking about it yet because the reality is, for every conference I've ever organized, all of the submissions come in in the days and hours. <laughs> Two weeks away. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Before, but we do need to get the word out. I mean, this is this is a smaller audience. That's data and metrics is something a little specific. So we need to. Okay. We need to get it out there. Sounds good. Sounds a plan. Ray, you said you were going to go. Yeah, yeah, I I need to submit a session, so I'll be there. So, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, that's why I was looking up the date just to make sure I didn't miss it. But. Okay, well, if you want a second set of eyes on that, I'd be happy to help you. 
Yeah, cool. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, and there are other dev rooms that people might be interested in submitting to, too. There's a community dev room, which has a CFP deadline, kind of a similar. I think that's one that's on the 23rd, maybe. Okay. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I submitted a, a couple of metrics related to all. I mean, one cool. for the lightning talk in the dev room for uh, FOSAM. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we'll see. But. Yeah. There's also yeah. an H HPC big data data science dev room that there might be some interesting things that people could submit into that too. So, because it'd be nice to get this, you know, not just in ChaosCon, but also kind of integrated into FOSDEV too. Yeah. And uh, for those of you, of you doing analysis of communities, remember that in the dev rooms for the corresponding communities, they usually appreciate um, the talks on how the community is performing and so on. So that applies to almost any dev room in, in FOSDEV. Yeah, that's a really good point. And say that again, so they report how their own community is doing? Yeah, if, if you're analyzing how any community, I mean, any open source community is working, it's very likely that they are going to be represented in some of the dev rooms in, in Fosdem. Okay. There are like 20 of them. So usually they appreciate talks on how they are performing, how they are they working, how the community is, or whatever, in terms of analytics. So if you uh, happen to have any of such presentations, that could be great. That'd be cool. Okay, that's great. I'd be interested to see how the communities report differently, how they say they're doing, like what metrics, what different sets of metrics they use to report success. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, anything else, Don? That was good. You good? Okay. Uh, GMD folks, John. Yeah, we are we are having the, our regular meetings, and now we are starting to have the first use case, which is race, by the way. And uh, I'm right now writing the pull request for having the first draft okay. for the use case. And uh, at the same time, we are starting to work in focus areas. So have a look at the tickets, at the issues mm -hmm. in the working group uh, repository, because the idea is to start refining the first one, which is code contributions. And uh, we want comments, so comment on uh, the current structure. And uh, with the idea of working top down, the idea will be to start talking about the goals, and then go with the questions, and then go with the metrics. So those are all embedded within the use case. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm I'm not talking about the use case now. So on the one hand, we have the use case. On the other one, we have the first focus area, which I, one, I see which I'm sorry. Time we are going to work. Okay. So remember that use cases are more like specific experiences. And uh, the, the top-down approach is mostly for starting with the goals for the focus areas, then go for the, the questions and metrics, similar to what the, the diversity and inclusion are doing. Right on. Okay, cool. Makes good sense. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Sean, anything over on your... No, I mean, I think we're, we're continuing to press forward. Um, we've got one use case, another submitted. And I think that the growth maturity decline group is starting to make, you know, some good traction. So, uh, really encouraging others to start engaging in the process because it's starting to get fun. Okay, cool. Yeah, right on. All right. Uh, any other items of business from people? I mean, I guess this is an informal meeting. So. Yeah. Any other pressing? Pressing concerns, all right, we do have a, there is a board meeting coming up after, at the end of November. Um, so if anybody has any items that they would like to be brought up at the board meeting, let myself or Jesus know, and we're happy to bring those forward. Um, or Ben, or Sean. So um, I think that's about it, at least from my end. Anybody else good? Okay, good for me. All right. Sounds good until next week, everybody. Uh, so next week is Thanksgiving here in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe lightly attended, I'm not sure. We can skip if you want, so don't worry. You know, I have family coming into town that I have to, I know, I have to, I know. Brace, I have to brace for them, not prepare. No. <laughs> no, what I mean is for, for all of you uh, in the States, that's going to be a complicated date. So maybe we can skip that meeting if you prefer, so whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think I'll be attending just because, like I said. I'll be here. 
Okay. okay. Well, there's uh, no harm in still showing up. So. I, I will be able to be here because I'm not taking off for my Thanksgiving plans until Wednesday. So. I'll be here because it's just another week for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right, well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right, talk to you. Bye. Bye. Bye.